Hello everybody and welcome to my level 1 to 99 farming guide. Now farming is one of my favorite skills and while it can be a little daunting to get started, overall it's actually fairly simple once you get the hang of it. Now today's guide is going to be focusing on the leveling aspect of farming. The farming skill as a whole has a ton of different options to it and that can make it a bit confusing. However, for the purpose of training, there really are only a couple of viable options. So today we can narrow it down and keep it simple. Now like the other videos, I'm going to be proposing three different routes for a variety of different players. One will be the absolute cheapest way to get 99 farming, one will be a nice balanced cost effective route. Finally, we will go over the quickest way to get 99 farming. Now farming has dozens of different plants you can grow. You have hot plants, you got herb patches, flowers, allotments, and each of those have a ton of different plants you can grow. But when you really boil farming down to what is actually the quickest and most efficient way to level it, really the only thing you're left with are tree runs. Farming is a very unique skill because you actually have to wait a long time to grow trees, like, like actual real life hours. Like for example, if you want to plant an apple tree, you'll actually have to wait 16 real life hours for it to grow. So tree runs are efficient because while they do take a long time to grow, the actual amount of your attention required is very minimal. All you have to do is plant the seed and then you can go do 16 hours of room crafting or whatever and come back. As to what are the reasons that you'd want to level up your farming, well there are quite a few really good reasons to do it. Now first up here we actually have the farming cape itself which is actually very useful. Now the farming cape does actually increase your yield when you are farming herb patches and a few other plants but the main reason that I think a lot of people find it useful is the teleport is very close to a bank. It can be a really great alternative to the crafting cape if you don't have that yet. Now the highest level quest requirement for farming is level 70 and that is for the Song of the Elves quest. And the highest level diary requirement is level 91 for the Falador Elite Diary. Beyond that, while we're not actually going to be covering farming for profit in this guide because it would just be too long, farming does offer a few really great ways to make money with it, primarily stuff like herb runs, creating saplings, and harvesting other plants. Now farming in particular has quite a few different quests that are heavily recommended slash almost required to complete and that is because they will unlock new patches for you to plant seeds in which will heavily increase your XP per hour or more accurately your XP per day. Now these are listed in order of importance in my opinion. For the purpose of this guide these are the quests that I would recommend doing. Now first up here we have the Bone Voyage quest. This is probably the one you want to prioritize finishing first. It will unlock the hardwood tree patches on Fossil Island which are a very cost effective way to train your farming and you'll want to start using that at level 35. Now another really early game quest I would highly recommend completing is Tree Gnome Village. It doesn't actually provide you any particular farming bonus or experience but it does unlock the spirit tree system and as you would imagine a giant spirit tree it is kind of linked to farming locations and is extremely helpful especially in the beginning. Now next up here we don't exactly have a quest but you want to get 60% or more Hosidia's house favor by the time you reach level 65 farming. Now unlocking the farming guild is heavily recommended because it has a nether tree patch, a nether fruit tree patch, a celestial tree patch, a redwood tree patch, and a and a ton of other stuff that we'll explain later. Now the next most important would be completing Morning Ends Part 1 or, or at least partially completing the quest. Morning Ends Part 1 will give you access to Letia which has a nether fruit tree patch in it. And finally here we have Song of the Elves which I'd recommend completing by level 70 or 80 farming if you want to take advantage of the new crystal tree. Now beyond quests that actually unlock new content, there are some you can do straight up just for farming experience and that is actually what we're going to talk about next. Okay so moving forward here, once again we're going to be going over a route that is very cheap a cost effective route and the quickest route possible in the game. Now regardless of what route you choose to go with, most players will elect to skip the first 15 levels of farming by doing one of these three methods. Now each of these methods will get you from level 1 to 15 which skips over a very slow chunk of beginner farming levels. Now first up here you can go from level 1 to 15 or higher just by completing quests. One really popular one is just by completing Fairy Tales Part 1 which will get you to actually level 17 and is really handy if you plan on doing any profitable herb farming because it does unlock the magic secateurs. Now additionally, if you're okay doing quests, you can also complete the Goblin General subquest, Forgettable Tales, Garden of Tranquility, Enlightened Journey, and My Arms Big Adventure, and that will actually get you all the way to level 35 farming, which is a really good route to go with. Now another really good option to go from level 1 to 15 is by creating Sulfurous Fertilizer. Now this is most likely what you're going to be doing regardless to get 100% Hosidia's favor, which again is required to unlock the farming guild and is something I would recommend doing anyway. Uh, so by getting 100% Hosidia's house favor, you will passively get 13 farming, and if you just do it for another 10 minutes after that, you will easily get to level 15 farming. 
Now the final method is by far the quickest, but it doesn't unlock you anything substantial, so I wouldn't really recommend it. But that would be planting bag plants in your POH. Now if you plant 78 bag plant ones, that will actually get you all the way to level 15 in around 10 minutes. And it's a really good option for players who just want to do it as quickly as possible. Now to start things off here, I'm going to be showing you the cheapest, reasonable way to get 99 farming. Now starting at level 15, you can do your very first tree run, and here's how you do it. It's very simple. Now your inventory will consist of a few different items. Now first appear to plant any sapling, you will need a spade. And once your tree has grown, to dig it up efficiently, you will also want to bring money. Now obviously you want to bring the tree saplings that you want to plant in the ground. Keep in mind that anything you plant will be in sapling form, not seed form. So starting at level 15, we can plant the oak saplings, which you can buy right on the ground exchange. Now that is actually all you need, but there are a bunch of other obviously highly recommended items to bring. Now at the bottom here we have all of our teleports. These are teleports you can get right from level 1, they have no requirements to use. Obviously you can sub them out for other things as well. So for a basic tree run, we're going to be bringing a Varrock teleport, a house teleport, although if you do have access to a Taverly teleport, that, that would be a bit better a Lumbridge Teleport, and a Ring of Wealth that will teleport us to Falador, specifically the Falador Park. And finally here we have Compost. Now Compost is very important, and you should always be using it if your trees are not protected. Protection is something we're going to be talking about a bit later, but learning how to do a basic run with Compost is still very important. I would highly recommend going ahead and buying the Bottomless Compost Bucket, it's so cheap. Right now it only costs 193k. And essentially all you do is fill it up with your compost if you're choosing. I would highly recommend just using Ultra Compost. Ultra Compost again, not very expensive right now. Not only does it save you inventory space, it also actually gives you more value per compost. It will actually cut your cost in half. Now also I would recommend bringing a rake. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you a very simple tree run that you can do right from level 15 that will take advantage of 5 tree patches you have immediately. Now first appear, run up here to the spirit tree and go to the gnome stronghold. Once you're at the Gnome Stronghold, run a little bit to the south. Run all the way down to where the Slayer Cave is located, and you should find a tree patch. First appear, use compost on the tree patch. And then plant your sapling. Now that's all. From here you can teleport to any of the locations. We'll use our house teleport or our Remington teleport next. From here just exit your house portal and run a little bit to the southeast. Now in this patch I already have something grown, now a really easy way to get rid of it is just to click on the NPC that should be nearby and go on pay. Hit 1 and it'll immediately chop it down, otherwise you have to chop it down with an axe which can take quite a while. Now plant your next seed. From here we're going to go to Varrock. Run a little bit up into the palace. And plant your next sapling here. From here we'll use the Ring of Wealth and go to the Falador Park. From here you should be like just a couple steps away. Plant your fourth sapling. And finally here, go to Lumbridge. Now obviously taking advantage of Graceful is highly recommended. If you don't have it, you can also bring a Stamina Potion. And finally here at the last patch, we'll plant our last sapling. And there we go, simple as that. Now once your tree is fully grown, all you have to do is repeat the process, bring the exact same inventory with another set of 5 saplings, this will save you a lot of time. The only difference is this time you're going to be checking the health of the tree and cutting it down. You get the grand majority of your experience when you check the health of the tree after it's fully grown. Now for the purpose of this guide, I am structuring the whole thing around you checking your crops only once a day. Now you can do it more than that, but as you get to higher farming levels, trees often take 16 hours to grow or even longer, which means for the majority of your farming training, you're really only going to be able to check around once a day. Now with all of that said, from level 15 to 27, you're going to be planting oak trees or acorns, like I just showed. You will need to fully grow 16 saplings to get to level 27, where you will unlock your next tree. If you do one run a day, it will take you 3 days to get to 27, although at lower levels you can do a lot more per day, as a low level tree like acorns actually only takes around 3 hours to grow. Now starting at level 27, we can do our very first fruit tree run. Now fruit trees are very cost effective and will make up a good chunk of experience on your way to 99. Now in essence, they are very similar to regular tree runs. You do the exact same thing, the only difference is they take a lot longer to grow. Each one will take 16 hours. Now at level 27 farming, you probably only have access to 4 fruit tree patches, although there are additional ones you can unlock. One is located in Letia, and you'll need to complete Morning Ends Part 1 to have access to it. And the other one is unlocked at the farming guild at level 85. Now a basic fruit tree run is very simple. Now the only things we're going to be withdrawing is the apple saplings. We'll withdraw 4 of them. And the only additional teleport we're going to need is the Catherby teleport. Now keep in mind that farming is unique in a way. 
where the different training methods are additive, not replacements. What I mean by that is we're going to be doing oak saplings and apple saplings at the same time. Sure, eventually we're going to replace our oak saplings with a higher tier tree seed and we're going to replace our apple saplings with a higher tier fruit tree seed. But tree saplings, fruit tree saplings, hardwood tree saplings, and a few other patches can be planted in tandem at the same time. Uh, so now I'm going to show you how to do the fruit tree run, but keep in mind you would be planting your oak saplings as well. Now to start off here, we're going to be going to the gnome stronghold once again. From here, we're actually just going to run a little bit to the east and should see a tree right there. As with the exact same thing, we'll put our compost down and then our apple sapling. And that's it. From here, we're going to go back to the spirit tree and now we're going to go to the tree gnome village. From here, we're going to run to the southwestern corner. Now, once you've squeezed through the fence, talk to Elkoi and he'll lead you out of the maze. After that, you should be very close to the second fruit tree patch and go ahead and plant your next tree. Now, from here, we're going to take advantage of the new Catherby teleport, which will put you very close to the next fruit tree patch. Alternatively, you can use a Camelot teleport, although you'll have to run a bit more. The third fruit tree patch is located way in the southeastern corner of Catherby. So now we will plant our third sapling. Now from here, a very simple way to get to Brimhaven where the final fruit tree is located is just to run up here to the Catherby docks. There are much quicker ways to do this. However, they are a bit higher level. Other options are using a redirection scroll to Brimhaven. You can also move your house to Brimhaven or you can charter a ship from Ardoin or somewhere else. Regardless though, the charter ship is very simple. Once you're on Brimhaven, just run a little bit to the south and you'll find your final fruit tree patch. So from levels 27, you're going to be planting the apple sapling. At level 33, you will unlock the banana sapling, which you're going to want to switch over to. Now, by doing both your fruit tree and your regular tree runs, you're going to be getting around 7,500 experience per day, which means it'll only take you around two days to go from level 27 to 35, and will cost you maybe only around 10,000 GP. All right, so once you reach level 35 farming, a couple things are going to happen. Now, first up here, you will have actually upgraded your regular tree from an oak sapling up to the willow sapling, and your fruit trees are going to go from an apple sapling up to a banana sapling. However, on top of that, at level 35, you will unlock a brand new type of patch, and that is the hardwood tree patch on Fossil Island. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, you will need to complete the Bone Voyage quest, which I would highly recommend having completed for level 35. Now, hardwood trees are extremely cost effective and very low effort. There's only one patch location, but there are three patches for you to plant. So I'm going to show you how to do that, but first I want to talk about one mechanic of farming I haven't really touched on yet, and that is tree protection. Now something you may have noticed, or maybe not if you're kind of lucky, is that your trees actually have a chance of becoming diseased and dying. Now at low levels, this is not that big of an issue. The trees don't take that long to grow and they are pretty inexpensive. But once you start getting into the higher levels, the time investment and cost investment get much higher. Now one way you can give your crops a 100% chance of survival is to pay an NPC to look after your tree for you. Now this is called protecting your crops and it is something you could consider doing. Now to protect your crops, you do need to pay the NPC normally in some sort of vegetable or fruit. For example, the teak tree requires 15 limpet root per protection, so you'd bring 45 limpet roots. Now the trade-off to this is that the protection can sometimes actually cost quite a bit. For example, here a teak sapling is only worth 208 GP, where the 15 limpet roots to protect it are worth around 10,000. Uh, so this kind of comes down to a personal preference. For the sake of this guide, I'm going to assume that you're going to be protecting all of your plants going forward. But both protecting your crops and ultra compost are both pretty good options, so you can kind of go with either one you want. In general, protecting your crops will be more expensive, but will speed up your farming experience, where relying on ultra compost will be a bit cheaper, but will slow down your experience as your crops die. Now, hardwood trees are very simple. All you're going to need is a dig site pendant. From here, we're going to teleport to the actual dig site teleport on it. From here, we're going to quick travel to the island and run a little bit up to the northwest. Now, fairly soon, you'll actually see a farming patch with three locations, and that is the hardwood tree patch. Okay, so if you're not going to be using the ultra compost, simply all you have to do is plant a tree. And then all you have to do is click on the squirrel and go to pay and then give them 15 limper roots. Keep in mind that they will take them noted, thank God. And this here is exactly why we bring the rake. Occasionally, weeds will grow which will require raking. So we're going to plant our second one here, pay the squirrel, go rake our last patch here. Now you don't need to put ultra compost down now because they do have a 100% chance of survival and that's just kind of a waste. Now because hardwood trees do take so long to grow, I am a fan of making the payment 
because three days is a pretty significant investment and it does kind of suck when one or more of your trees are dead. Now the next level segment here is from level 35 to 55. So you're going to be taking care of three separate patches. You're going to be planting the teak trees which we just did now. You are going to be planting willow trees in your regular tree patches. In your fruit tree patch you're going to go from bananas up to oranges to curry and finally to pineapple trees. All of these options are fairly cost effective and I would recommend planting the next highest level fruit tree as soon as possible. Now as we are taking care of three separate types of patches now, the experience per day is going to jump up notably, going from 22,000 experience a day at level 35 up to around 33,000 as you get closer to 55. Now getting to level 55 will take you around 5 days and in total will actually only cost you around 100,000 GP so it's still fairly cheap. Now the next level segment is going to be from levels 55 to 72. Now there are a couple interesting things going on here. First and foremost, you're going to be switching over from teak trees to mahogany trees. Now mahogany trees are awesome. They award nearly 16,000 experience all while still being fairly cheap. The only drawback is they do take nearly 4 days to grow. Now at this point I would highly recommend taking advantage of the time tracking plugin in Runelite if you use it. It should be on by default and it is a really easy way to keep track of your farm runs. Now we're also going to move up to planting papaya trees. Now papayas are really cost effective and this is actually the highest tier fruit tree seed I would recommend planting. Everything after this does cost a substantial amount more. Now this might be kind of controversial but at this point I would actually consider not doing your tree runs at all. Anything above the willow sapling becomes very expensive. And as you get into the later levels, I don't even think it's really worth your time to do willow sapling runs. As with around 55, you could actually consider just dropping them all together and only doing fruit tree runs and hardwood tree runs. Now, if you do follow that advice, you're going to get around 37,000 experience per day. It will take you 20 days to get to level 72 and will only cost you around 580k, as so still pretty cost effective. Now starting at level 72, you unlock one of the most cost effective farming training methods in the entire game and that is Calquat tree farming. These things are incredibly cheap, uh, thank you Zora. And once you are level 72 farming you can start planting them. Now Calquat trees are planted on an entirely different patch on Karamja. They only cost 350 GP but provide you with 12,500 farming experience making them the ideal farming plant. Even with the farming protection, they only cost you 1000 GP which still makes them the cheapest farming training method in the game. Now the only hang up is getting there it can be a little bit annoying. Uh, some people opt to use Taiba Wano Trio teleports to teleport them right there but those are actually quite expensive. Uh, so what I would recommend doing is either moving your house to Brimhaven or you can also just take advantage of redirection scrolls which you can buy from the Nightmare Zone shop. Regardless as we'll have a construction requirement of 40. If you don't have this you can just run from the Brimhaven dock, ideally when you're doing your fruit tree run anyway. For me we're just going to use a redirection scroll for now, put it to Brimhaven and we'll just teleport right there. Now from here we're just going to run a little bit to the southeast and we'll keep heading south until we hit the Taiba One Eye village. Now right beside the anvil you will see a farming patch and that is the Calquat tree patch. As well, checking health on it gives you 12,000 experience which is crazy for how cheap it is. Uh, so that's all we're going to do, we're going to plant our Calquat and we'll pay for the protection as well. As uh, so from level 72 to 90 we're going to be growing the one Calquat tree because there's only one patch, three mahogany trees and we're also going to continue on with papaya trees although at this point I would definitely try to unlock the fifth patch in Letya by finishing Morning's End Part 1. Once you have completed the quest, the tree run is very simple. You will have a teleport crystal from completing the quest. I have the eternal one, but the regular one works fine. From here we're going to teleport to Letya. And then we're going to run a little bit to the east. And that should be your fifth fruit tree patch. So if you do take advantage of all of those patches, you're going to get around 55,000 experience per day. Which means getting from level 72 to 90 will take a whopping 80 days. That sounds like a lot, but it only takes a few minutes every day. So that 4.4 million experience will only cost you around 2.6 mils as it is still incredibly cheap. Ok and finally here at level 90 you unlock one of the last cost effective ways to train your farming and that is the redwood tree patch. Now once again the redwood tree is an entirely different patch which means you're going to plant it on top of planting your fruit tree, your hardwood tree and your calqua tree. Now the run is very simple and it's going to involve going to the farming guild. Now we haven't really talked too much about the farming guild but at this point I would definitely recommend unlocking it if you haven't already. Now because we have also passed level 85 you will have unlocked your final fruit tree patch which is also in the farming guild and those will be our last unlocks before 99. Now the easiest way to get here by far is just using a skills necklace. It is simply the number 6 option on the skills necklace teleport. You can buy these right from the grand exchange. 
as that teleports you right into the guild, which is very convenient. Now from here, you need to go into the northern section, which isn't unlocked until level 85, and that is why we haven't really come here before now. Uh, first up here, we can plant our final fruit tree. And finally, the titanic redwood tree. Now the redwood tree does take a whopping four and a half days to grow, so pretty much five days for all intents and purposes. But it does provide the most experience out of any tree in the game at around 22,600, everything included. Now because this tree takes so long to grow, I would highly recommend making the payment to protect it 100%, because it is very sad when your redwood tree dies. So that's it guys, that's the final tree you need to grow. I know it's a ton of information, but this is really one of the most cost effective ways to get 99 farming. Uh, so level 90 to 99 is about 7.6 million experience, and if you only plant the most cost effective crops, that being papayas, mahogany trees, calquats, and redwoods, you're going to be getting around 67,000 experience per day. In total, it'll take you 115 days to get to 99 from level 90, but will only cost you 4.8 mil. Uh, so still very cost effective. Uh, so that means everything accounted for, it will take you 225 days or 225 tree runs to reach level 99 farming. Now a tree run can be very quickly, once you get the hang of it, it shouldn't take you more than 5 minutes, but even at around 7.5 minutes a day, your actual in-game time commitment is only around 28 hours for 99 farming and will only cost you 8 mil if you go with the cheapest route. Now if you are willing to spend a bit more money, uh, here is a medium expense way to get 99 farming. Now there's actually only a couple modifications from the cheapest route, now to keep things simple, from levels 1 to 72, we're going to be doing the exact same thing as the cheapest route. Of course, at any point you can consider making any modifications to that, but to keep the guide a bit shorter, roughly going to be the same thing. Now one of the biggest changes we're going to make on this route is instead of stopping at papaya trees, we're going to go up to palm trees. They are more expensive, but provide a fairly notable increase in experience, being nearly double that of the papaya tree. Uh, so from level 72 to 85, you're going to be planting the palm tree, five of them, three mahogany trees once again, and the calquat tree. Pretty simple. If you plant those three different patches, you will get around 76,000 experience per day, and this time will only take you 31 days to get to 85, at a cost of around 6.9 mil. Now starting at level 85, there is another tree patch we haven't actually talked about, another one located in the farming guild, called the Celestris patch. I really like the Celestris patch because it is fairly cost effective still, all while giving really good experience. Now the Celestris patch is kind of unique because to get the full value out of it you actually do need to harvest it. When you harvest the Celestris tree it'll actually drop a Celestris bark which you can cut into battle staves which are incredibly valuable. Now the patch is located once again in the third tier of the farming guild which does have a level 85 requirement just to get in. Uh, so once again a skills necklace is an ideal teleport. I would highly recommend using ultra compost for this patch specifically because it does increase the yield of your crops. Also if you do have the magic secateurs they do work on the Celestris patch which will allow you to get more of your money back. Now planting and protecting a Celestris patch will cost you around 70,000 GP but on average you're going to get around 4 or 5 battle staffs back or more which cover over half of your expenses. Which means from level 85 to 90 you're going to be getting around 101,000 experience per day. It'll take you 21 days to get there and will cost around 6 mil. And finally here from levels 90 to 99, once again we're going to take advantage of the redwood tree, which means the last level segment will involve planting 6 palm trees, 3 mahogany trees, 1 calquat tree, 1 celestrous tree, and 1 redwood tree. Uh, so it is definitely a lot to keep track of, but it is worth it. Your XP per day will bump up a little bit to around 106,000, getting the last level segment will take around 72 days, and will cost you around 21.5 mil in total. Which means overall the medium expense route will cost you 37 mil, but will only take you 149 days, or around 19 hours of game time. Now to top everything off here, we have the most expensive and quick way to get to 99 farming. I wouldn't really recommend this to many people because it is really expensive. For a skill that you will probably just passively get up anyway. Now from levels 1 to 75, you are simply going to be planting the highest level tree available for every patch. So you're going to go from acorns to willows to maples to use and eventually up to magic trees. And you're going to do the same thing for fruit trees. Now starting at level 75, you can start planting the magic tree and in 6 different patches. Now this adds on a significant cost of around 1.1 mil for every tree run you do. 
And on top of that, you're gonna be taking advantage of an additional patch we haven't even talked about yet, and that is the Crystal Tree patch. This is only available after having completed the Song of the Elves, and is a fairly expensive option for farming. Now from level 75 to 81, if you're taking advantage of everything possible, at this level that would be 5 palm trees, 6 magic trees, 3 mahogany trees, a calquat tree, and a crystal tree, you're going to be getting 173,000 experience every day, which means it'll only take you 6 days to get to 81, and about 8.5 million GP. Now starting at level 81, the only difference here is going to be you can now bump yourself up to dragon fruit trees, which are an extremely expensive fruit tree option. So 81 to 85 will only take you 5 days, but will cost you 11.6 mil. And finally here, the last level chunk here from 85 to 99, you're going to be taking advantage of every possible tree in the game. So that will be 6 dragon fruit trees, 6 magic trees, 3 mahogany trees, 1 calcot tree, 1 crystal tree, 1 celestial tree, and finally a redwood tree once you get to level 90. It's a ton to keep track of, and like I said, I wouldn't really recommend planting all of these. This is kind of just more for comparison's sake. So if you did that all the way to 99, it would only take you 43 days of tree runs, but would cost you 102 mil, which means the most expensive method in farming will cost you in total 130 mil, but will only take you 67 days of farm runs to get 99. That equates to only around 8 or 9 hours of game time, which actually kind of makes it one of the quickest 99s in the game. So here are how the methods compare. We have the cheapest route, which will take 225 days, or around 28 hours of game time, but will only cost you 8 mil. I'd recommend this to pretty much anyone who has time on their hands, like there's no need to really rush it, and if you start early, you will get 99 farming eventually, with minimal time investment. Next up here we have the balanced route, which I think is also a fairly good option, coming in at around 37 mil in total, and will take you roughly 150 days, or around 19 hours. And finally here we have the most expensive option, which will cost you about 4 times more than the balanced route, but also anything in between is also viable. Anyway guys, that is going to be it. Farming guides are ridiculously hard to make for some reasons. There's obviously definitely more you could talk about, but this guide is already going to be close to 30 minutes, so I think it's definitely long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and let me know what skill guide you'd like me to cover next, and maybe we'll get around to doing it. Now before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A huge shout out to Valhalla Lad who just subscribed at the Dragon tier of YouTube membership. Thank you man, I really appreciate it. They're joining Brian Robinson, Cappy, Brad Sings, Ocelot, and Kush Patel all at the Dragon tier. You guys are awesome. Also big shout out to Birdbot, Timothy Chen, and Base Titch. If you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is a really awesome way to do it. Help support me directly. In return, you can be immortalized in my videos, get access to my video release schedule, and even get a custom role in my Discord server. Anyway guys, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.